All right, this is a little bit, uh, this is a whole lot cleaner uh, than the picture that I was trying to draw with my pen, uh, introducing to you the, the concept of this ASA Lena engine. Uh, to show you what came before this, we had the ASA product, and then if you wanted to do, think about the old 5500 ASAs. This was uh, about a generation ago. What we would do with these is we would come in and we'd say, okay, well, if I wanna do IPS, I'm gonna dedicate this hardware module. It was basically a LAN card that installed with an Intel processor, with a stick of RAM, with a hard drive, and it was another computer with its own resources that we plugged into the ASA as a LAN card that had the ability to communicate with it through the backplane. So high level of communication, but ultimately what happened was you got your physical interfaces like here and here, traffic comes into the ASA, we identify a traffic flow, we say the action that needs to be taken is IPS, and we basically punt it over to the IPS. All of our traffic intelligence is being performed on this dedicated piece of hardware. Why? Because it's heavy lifting. Uh, all these signatures that we turn on, the, uh, the deep pack inspection, the hashing of all the fields, the comparisons, trying to do it at a line rate, it's a lot of work. So we've historically had these kind of hardware, you know, physical devices. In the 5500X, you wound up with one physical box, and we go, here's our ASA, and what we're gonna do is have a virtual firewall, and they'd call this like a software blade. Like, what? And you'd like basically deploy a VM on top of the ASA, and it still had this internal communication. So it was kind of like version one, version two, and where we're at now is version three. This is what they call unified. So the ASA and the source fire logic are all running on top of the same resources. So if here's my CPU, here's my memory, basically ASA is running right in there on the same exact kernel using the same stack uh, as our Snort engine. So they're working in conjunction side by side. The way that the traffic flow goes is traffic comes in, we're gonna use all the, I'd say battle-tested, hardened, proven code that's worked for many, many years uh, from the ASA. This is a fantastic way to do things like look at TCP sequence numbers, look at access control lists, handle VPN connectivity, handle connection rate limiting, uh, you know, all those types of kind of like wholesome, good old traditional layer three, layer four uh, traffic management policies. It's really an important piece of the firewall. You can't just skip it. Um, and we'll see even in even higher resolution as we go through this, all the things that are occurring here. Basically, this is low cost processing. As traffic comes in, we can make decisions at a lower level before we waste a lot of resources and start to throw away things early on. Why? That's gonna preserve our resources. Once we throw away all the easy stuff and we need deeper analysis, it's gonna be a bit more costly, we can punt those traffic flows to the Snort engine. So this is where that next generation part comes in. This is gonna have a lot of intelligence for looking at what's happening within the application. Once we make a decision here, what they call the snort verdict, the traffic will pass back to the ASA and then continue to be processed by the Lena engine on the way out. So back in version one, we'd see traffic flow right here with the 5500s. Uh, we'd see a traffic flow, we'd punt it to hardware, and then the hardware would punt it back across the backplane. We're kind of doing that here, but it's happening all within the same system without uh, that concept of like running a separate virtual machine or anything. So here it is, I love this diagram. This has changed a little bit over the years, uh, but <laughs> for a long time we didn't have anything like this. So structured kind of logical troubleshooting on the ASA was pretty difficult. Then they gave us Packet Tracer, and this is kind of what Packet Tracer is showing you when you walk the path of the packet, except this component, which is critical. And that's existing connection. When we run Packet Tracer, it doesn't consider this. Uh, what's the existing connection? Well, let's go through it real quick. Packet comes into our firewall. We receive it. It's basically gonna hit our NIC. The NIC has a driver. That driver manages the buffer. We may have QoS rules or different things applied. But basically, as that packet comes in, the NIC is gonna process it and then hand it off to the ASA's code. The first thing your ASA does, or the Lena engine in this case, is says, is this part of an existing flow? If it is, I've already done all the complex lookups, I've made a decision, I've got an answer, that answer is cached in the state table, let's go ahead and start moving that data right away and not waste any more time. 
Alternatively, if it is not an existing connection, there's a lot of checks I've got to go through for this first run to make sure that I handle the packet properly. Maybe I've got to unknot the packet. Maybe I've got to pick the egress interface. You know, ingress coming in, egress coming out, that's gonna let me see before I make any decisions. I go, wait a minute, where is this packet going? If it's from the outside head to the inside, it may not be allowed. Um, if it's from the inside going to the DMZ, it might be permitted, but I've gotta look at some things first, like a pre-filter policy. Pre-filter policy is gonna show me things that I should be throwing away before I do anything complex. So um, we can predefine this. Cisco's gonna give us uh, probably much better answers in terms of people that we don't wanna to talk to, known attackers, known scumbags. If they try to send us traffic, um, we'll see it, we'll throw it away, and we won't waste those heavy resources. Once we get past those feeds, we can come over and we can work through our layer three, layer four ACL. Again, very low cost filtering. Let's throw things away here before we do tr any type of like deep inspection. Now the things that made it through are gonna come into our DAQ. And this is where we make a determination of, is this something that needs a deeper layer of analysis? If so, we punt it to the snort engine. If there's no inspection needed, we can go ahead and forward it back out and get this packet out of the firewall. Again, we don't wanna hang on to it for a real long time. So we're trying to make all these decisions as fast as we can. Once we make a good decision, we cache it. So again, packets coming along. We can update our flow data, update our counters. We can add the header. Uh, again, on egress, if it needs to be encrypted, we'll go ahead and encrypt it, leverage the layer three route, then leverage the layer two. So basically, this is what's gonna be responsible for generating that new layer two header that says this is coming from the ASA to whatever the next hop is. So this is kind of nice too. So this is showing us how that pre-filter policy works. So again, this is something that's gonna uh, just look at traffic as soon as it comes in and says, is this something we need to bother with? If not, we can leverage what's called a fast path rule. In other words, just hurry up and forward the packet. Don't worry about checking all these crazy policies. If we can't hit that fast path rule, well, now we've got to actually do some analysis. It can start off with what they call SI or security intelligence, followed by our layer three, layer four access list. Again, coming in looking at security intelligence, considering domain names and URLs, looking at the content with layer seven access list, potentially levering file policies. If you wanna maybe block certain file types or um, block certain data from leaving your organization, uh, things like this. Then we can last but not least hit our IPS policy and then finally do our next hop lookup and punt the packet. So looking at these boxes in a, a bit closer detail, it's almost like we're just rolling our mouse wheel and going in a little bit closer each time. That pre-filter policy is used to ignore block traffic that does not require further inspection by the snort rules. Next, here's our security intelligence. After we buy the firewall, we've got to buy a, a threat intelligence license. This is going to determine what feeds we get from Cisco and the Talos group. Assuming that we've got our license on there, we're constantly pulling updated information about blacklists. These are known IP addresses, domain names, and URLs that are hostile, that are up to no good. Additionally, traffic blocked here will never enter later policies. This is going to save us money later. The ASA, the um, Firepower Appliances, they're fast, but they still have limited resources. When we start turning on all these bells and whistles, doing SSL decrypt, doing HTTP uh, Unicode decoding, uh, doing virtual reassembly of fragmented packets, all that stuff takes additional resources. So we throw away everything that we can early on. Then when we come over here to heavier policies, like SSL decryption, this is gonna take some weight. Like when we look at certain fire, fire uh, power appliances, you'll see that they can do this decryption and hardware, meaning as traffic volume increases, you're not gonna watch the CPU utilization follow it. Um, but this is still something we have to be mindful of. Our appliance may not have that hardware support. Um, so again, look at utilization with this off, with this on, and just try to be mindful about uh, loading your box up too heavily. It's got the ability to block or decrypt traffic based on uh, criteria, and the decrypted traffic can finally be inspected by more intelligent rules. Uh, again, we come over here for security intelligence, look at URL, look at DNS. 
Uh, over here, we hit our access control policy, which is really our, our basically our global rule set for all the things that we define as administrators that should be happening on the box. Uh, this can start to become more granular and intelligent with file policies and IPS policies. And this is a little bit of a close-up of that. So the access control policy uh, for your appliance is gonna govern the whole box. All of our other policies go here. And this is where we see our pre-filter policy, SSL, identity policy, DNS policy, and then we actually get into our rules. So in this case, again, just kind of looking back at the way that firepower is managed, your appliance here, your firewall that's actually got the NICs, it's passing the traffic, the management doesn't occur here like it used to with ASDM and the ASA. You're actually gonna come over to this separate device. A lot of times it's a fire, uh, firepower management center virtual machine. And then this virtual machine will be hosted maybe on top of your ESX cluster. Um, you've got to link these, you know, so we deploy the FMC, we link it to our firewall, and at that point I can log into that FMC and I can create my policies and I can make my changes and push the changes and view all my stats and do all my management all from FMC. Remember, this is where we build our policies. They have to be pushed out to the firewall, and then when the firewall sees events occur, of course he sends all the alerts back to FMC. This is where the disk space exists. This is where our database is running. Uh, this is where we're gonna be able to collect all that uh, intelligence about what's actually happening on our network. Of course, we could punt this uh, from FMC out to our SIM, uh, but just for the two components, this is how they fit together.